Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, for today's video, we're gonna go and do something a little different. So, for this new year, I actually encountered a question that I haven't really put much thought of until recently. Someone asked me, what was the purpose of this channel? Why did I create it in the first place? And as I started to think about it, as I was creating more and more video, I actually slowly lost sight of the purpose of this channel. And so when I sat down and I actually thought about it, I remembered why I created this channel in the first place, why I named it the way it did, right? This channel is named Caveman Chang. And the reason I decided to name it Caveman is because actually, for me, caveman symbolized sort of brute force. And that's the way I usually approach solving problem. So a little history. I've been in the sort of math education field for a little bit. I've been a tutor, I've been a teacher assistant, and I've spent time being a teacher as well. And here's the thing, a lot of the time, from my experience, encountering with students, parents, so on and so forth, when they see that I am teaching math, the first instinct is that you must be really smart. You must be really good at math. Well, actually, that's not the case for me. In high school, for example, I nearly failed math twice. Even when I went into college and I chose to study math and major in math, my reason for choosing to study and major in math is actually not because I truly liked math at that time. It was a sort of pick your poison kind of scenario. So I had math, which I was okay with, not great, not smart in any way. If not, I had something that was more inclined to sort of like an English and being naive as I was, I was trying to avoid English as much as possible because I was even worse at English than math. So when I went to college and I had to choose a major, I wanted to choose something that was as far away from writing any kind of paper as possible. Hence, I chose to study math. Needless to say that for the first semester, I was lucky in that the first semester was basically calculus in which I took in high school. So I sort of was sort of ahead at that point. After the second semester, and at least you know for the second year, I suffered through math. It was tough. I had the mentality that I had to memorize all these formulas, and I was as smart because some of the other students sitting there were like knew the formula instantly, knew exactly what to do with it, and I was just really struggling to keep up. And then by the time I hit my third year in college, that's when I encountered a professor, and they said something that I really enjoyed, I really liked about it, and I really took it to heart, and that was, when you encounter a problem and you don't know what to do, just solve it in the dumbest way possible. Now, dumbest doesn't mean to just write a wrong answer and there you are, you're done. Dumbest is just basically do whatever you think is potentially gonna be right, even if it's the long way, even if it's gonna take you forever. Because guess what? As you start working through the problem, you start seeing a pattern, you start seeing a potential path to actually solving the problem, and then you can move on from there. So if you don't know what to do, just do it the dumb way. And that really resonated with me. Then I start to realize, as I start working through more and more math, that yes, every problem has a smart way, and I'm not dismissing it at all. There's a smart way, it'll save you plenty of time, and if you can see it and you can do it right away, great. That usually comes with experience and sometimes just from geniuses. And you know, guess what? Not all of us are gonna be math genius, and I accept that, I'm not one. So, from there I realized that for math problems, a lot of them, you can brute force it. It's gonna take you a lot of time. It's gonna take you a lot of effort. It's gonna be a lot harder than if you know exactly what to do. But guess what? You can still solve that problem. So that's what I did. During my third year, and as I studied more and more and to strive to become actually a math instructor at that point, a lot of the problems, I always start off with just brute forcing it because just brute forcing it gives me a leeway. I know at least to do something and eventually you sort of see a pattern and then you have a higher chance of solving it. Not all problems like that, but a majority is. So this is what I was hoping with this channel is to impart sort of this brute force mentality towards math to make it enjoyable so that we don't see a math problem don't know how to solve it and think, oh my God, I'm not a genius, I'm not smart in any way and give up right away. Just by sitting down, powering through it, eventually we'll see patterns, we'll see results and actually have a little fun with math. And that's what I was hoping this channel was gonna be like. So, 
For today's video, I want to talk about this problem. Now, I've talked about this problem before just for the sheer beauty of how it was solved. This was solved by a person named Gauss. Hopefully, I spelled this correctly. Gauss, okay? Or at least it was known that he was the one who figured out a shortcut to solve this. So, the history or the story is that basically Gauss's instructor gave him and every one of the students that he had this particular problem. One plus two plus three plus, you know, so on and so forth, all the way until you add 97, 98, 99, and 100. And you're trying to find the final answer for this. Now, the story goes that, all right, well, once presented with the problem, a majority of his classmates just jumped right in and started adding one plus two plus three, and then just, you know, by hand, so on and so forth, all the way into 100. Gauss, on the other hand, found this a magnificent way of reorganizing number. So what he did is that he realized that if he did 1 and 99, that's added to 100. 2 and 98 added to 100 and then found it out uh, easier way to solve this problem. Now, the original message, at least what I got from this story, is that not to work, I guess you say harder, but to work smarter. And that's great. I think that's a good lesson. But I don't think that's the best way to go about it or the best way to understand it. The way I saw this problem is that I love the beauty of it. It showed the power of the associative property and the commutative property and how you can reorganize to make your life a lot easier. But keep in mind that Gauss is also a math genius. His name is pretty well known in math history, right? All his classmates are not. And guess what? A good number of us are not math genius who will have our name remembered down in history. And that's fine, right? I don't expect my name to be remembered in any way, shape, or form after this. So we're not all Gauss. We're going to be most likely like his classmate. And so this idea of work smarter, not harder, ends up dismissing all of his classmates. And I don't like that. But guess what? This problem itself, I love that story. And that get, even though his classmates are not geniuses, they still had a fighting chance. They still can solve this problem. Yes, it's going to be tough. I mean... 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way, that's a lot of work. Not that fun. But if they power through it, brute force it, they will still get the answer. Even though it takes a little longer, even though they're going to be dead tired, it still works. It, get, it is a fighting chance. And that's what I really love about this problem. That's something that I really enjoyed when I really sat down and think about it. So hopefully with this channel moving forward, I'm going to show you guys problems. And I'm going to show you guys skills and I'm going to show you guys quick and easy way to solve it and hopefully help you guys understand it better. But I also want to show you guys what happens when we encounter a problem. We don't know what to do. We're going to try to brute force it. And when we brute force problem, we're going to see patterns. And from then on, we can actually, quote unquote, use smarter ways to solve the problem and hopefully just make our, I guess, experience with math a lot more enjoyable. Thank you for watching me rant in this video. See you in the next one.